So I'm starting to get a better idea of what this is actually going to look like. I'm thinking like there's going to be two windows, right? So I can pop this outside of the current window. Like, for example, uh, like this, right? And that becomes a separate window. Well, I think that's actually going to be really cool because then I can I can treat this as two separate windows. I can do do my controls there, <coughs> uh, and then have the full display to show. Uh, and I don't have any bullshit behind the menu that's getting drawn, so that's going to be good for. Oh, I mean, you're not wasting performance on drawing stuff that's not visible. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah. So this little yellow block here is going to be. Um, plan for that is to have the the widget um, drawn there, the little uh, orientation widget. And I'm going to do that as a low resolution ray march pass. Um, my thinking there is like basically um, okay let me kind of show my reasoning. Um, So, reason for doing something like that is that the reason for doing something like that is because this widget here it's difficult to position and it depends on resolution and I don't like that. Uh, I want to have something that's better integrated. I have some sliders to like position it and that sucks. Like it works, like it rotates with the model and you know, it's fine. Um, but that is the vast majority of the geometry that's present in my engine. Um, that's like the only mesh component that's actually like there. Um, yeah, we'll drop that. Um, and my thinking is like, yeah, if I can just do a low resolution remarch here, and I might do it even lower resolution than this. Um, this is. Um, seven characters tall, um, 20 characters wide, which comes out to 160 by 112, um, which still is like quite a bit to be doing any significant amount of ray marching. So either, yeah, I'm going to have to think about that, but um, it's either going to be something where I'm not exactly sure what it's going to be, because that's going to be writing the same buffer, the accumulator buffer, unless it's written as a post. Okay, and that, that might be the move, is to do it as a post process, or give it its own small texture. I'm going to have to brainstorm on this one a little bit. It may make sense to give it its own small texture and just apply it. Um, as opposed to the process just kind of copied over. Um, in any event, well, what would be cool about that is because I, I could go even lower resolution and then I could implement some interpolation on that target um, so that that, um, yeah, it's even cheaper, yeah. I was thinking before if I do it at a half res and then write two by two pixel blocks per invocation, but that's going to look chunky and I don't think I'll like how that looks. I mean, it might be worth a try, but um, <coughs> I think drawing to a small texture, very small compute shader would be a really good move. So I think that's going to be one of the first things I prototype on this. Um, like, 
yeah, I want to get that working. Then I think next is getting the main display working. Then I've got a plan for configuring the menus. Um, so, right, yeah, like the way that this is set up right now, there's categories and then there's like selectable things below that. And, and what this is going to be is basically the title, the description, <clears throat> the details, the everything is going to be populated from this big JSON structure that is going to have um, information about the parameters, information about it's going to have the file path of the shader and yeah one of these tabs will be like view shader source um, so you'd be able to like um, you know like see the source um, of what you're launching and I don't imagine it'd be something you look at but maybe if you're like curious on some implementation detail that'd be useful um, the of, yeah, so <coughs> each parameter has a type, a default value, min and max for the ranges, uh, control type, because Veraldo, a lot of times, um, you would use, you know, different types of sliders or, or whatever, even for things that were of the same type. Um, integers, for example, being one, maybe you have a uh, slider for integer somewhere and... <coughs> Uh, other places you have that one that has like a plus and minus next to it. Anyway, so some kind of, you know, way to define that. Then a label for that control and maybe a short description of what that control is setting. I'm going to do that as a tool tip on each operation. Then I want to have a description of the operation. Um, have that in this tab or whatever and just kind of explain a little bit what's happening um, as far as structural stuff uh, we're gonna need to know the invocation structure so that's like there's really only like two of them there's one that's per voxel and then there's ones where it's well there's actually three there's one that's uh, a CPU thing that happens and then gets copied over. There's one that is a per voxel compute shader, uh, and there is one that is a um, uh, it goes in 2D slices um, <coughs> along some axis, and. That's actually something I want to be settable. Um, specifically, this is the the GI is the only thing that uses this, um, and what that does is like it starts at what it calls the bottom, and then okay, so it does that first layer, second layer, third layer, blah blah blah, up to the dimension. And what I want to do is um, have it be settable what direction that pass goes in. So if it's going in the positive Z direction or negative Z direction, positive Y, negative Y, positive Z, negative Z. So six different options for that. And then maybe something that like launches all of them or like some set of them. Um, if you want to do some kind of like, I don't know. I'll have to think about how I want to structure that. But so the JSON is not going to be able to handle everything um, unless I just get really crazy with the structure and I don't want to do that so I think several of these things are going to require you know more manual setup um, specifically the that GI thing some of that configuration I think um, the voxel automata terrain um, is going to require its own kind of you know, layout. Um, the spaceship generator is, and then the um, uh, the lettering one. The user shader is going to be unique, um, just because I'm not getting into that. Uh, trying to generalize this, this parameter structure to 
handle the text editor. I'm not going to do that. Doesn't make any sense. The load save is going to be handled as a special case. Yeah, so it's just like some some subset of the operations are going to be <coughs> handled um, as specific cases. Um, so that's like kind of some of the high-level plans I've got at this point. Um, within the so yeah settings I think I'm going to do subsections on settings. There's right now like this is the post-processing controls and I think I'm going to kind of like break this out into like yeah post-processing you know blah 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 we'll do it in different things so this is like the gamma slider and then there this is cool I found a logarithmic slider um, there's a flag that you can pass so you get more precision in the lower ranges and then um, top end goes a lot faster anyway I want to do um, the screenshot utility is going to be a lot easier this time because I've got that image wrapper set up. Um, I wrote the thing to, you know, initialize something from a pointer, and so I can pull the data from the GPU, you know, initialize an image with it, and then I can just save it so I don't have to screw around with a bunch of bullshit. I can do the manipulation on the image structure because it's got all the flip and resize stuff integrated already. Um, so yeah, really this is going to be <coughs> um, this is going to be cool. Uh, yeah. And I think something else that might make a lot of sense to do is when I do the screenshot utility, I want to maybe spawn a thread to do the write um, just so that the program can continue. Like I don't want it hanging when I take a screenshot. I think that's stupid. Um, and there's really no reason for it either because you got the resources to spawn another thread uh, that can do all the, the image stuff in the background and yeah, I, mean, I, I should. It, it's, I just should. Um, that's one of the big bottlenecks on rendering the animations was, I mean, like half of the time almost, I want to say. Maybe even more. I'm not 100% sure. But a lot of the time of rendering animation was saving the images. So if I can spawn off threads that are doing that in the background, like, I think that's going to be a good thing. And it's not like, I don't know, that would be a lot of threads, but yeah, I don't know. I'll have to think about that at the time. See if it creates an issue. If it doesn't, then we'll just do it that way. If it does, I'll have to rethink it, kind of see how many can be inflated at once. And yeah, we'll work from there. Yeah, but anyway, that's the plan for a couple of different things. I'm going for the the bash screenshot slash video thing. Um, it's not going to be just the single rotation thing. Uh, I want to do vertical rotation, arbitrary axis rotation. Um, yeah, I mean, just do some different things. Um, What else? Anything else? Um, yeah, I think this menu structure is actually really cool. Um, <clears throat> and I really like the idea of having this child window. Like, this thing like pops out and then like, this will be gone, this will be integrated into here. Um, so it's just the one window and then the parent window. Um, so, yeah. Like, this will be completely out of your face. It'll just be this uh, rendered target that shows up. Yeah. Cool.